This is module three of the train analysis tutorial. In this module, we will discuss train attribute applications. In our study watersheds, we analyze the effectiveness of using train attributes to identify areas of surface erosion, such as gullies and side inlets. Field surveys were completed locating these features on the ground. Here's an example of a gully. And here's an example of a side inlet. These surveys were compared to train attribute data we already calculated. A number of these features were occurring where SPI signatures interfaced with the riparian corridor. An SPI signature is simply a connected path of high SPI values. In this example, the red area shows such a signature, and the blue lines can be interpret interpreted as flow paths. These flow paths are only based on topography. Subsurface drainage, both natural and artificial, plays a large role in the surface flow and is not being accounted for with these models. That being said, topography can be characterized rapidly and accurately with advancing LiDAR technologies, and it can describe a large piece of the puzzle regarding surface flows. It can also do so without complicated subsurface flow equations. Based on our analysis in several south central Minnesota watersheds, the following is a procedure that can be used to locate probable areas of concentrated overland flow and may indicate areas of surface erosion. An aerial photo of some kind is the base layer for this method. A streams layer is also helpful when identifying features and their proximity to the riparian corridor. The final layer is the SPI layer that was created in the previous module. Using statistical software, we, will, we were able to determine that the upper 15% of SPI values within our study watershed were effective at identifying gully and side inlet features. If a statistical package is available that can accommodate large LiDAR data sets, it may be valuable to determine the percentile of each pixel amongst all of the pixels in the watershed. This can be used as a guide for classifying the SPI layer when employing this method. If statistical software is not available, the SPI data layer can be classified within ArcMap. For this analysis, remove the lower values of SPI so the aerial photo can be easily seen, but try to maintain enough of the SPI layer so flow signatures can be also distinguished. It is extremely important to note that the train attribute values represent landscapes relative to one another. They are not absolute values to be used across all landscapes. For example, an SPI value of 10 may indicate strong erosive potential in one watershed and not necessarily strong potential in another. To identify areas of potential overland erosion, follow the streams layer along the riparian corridor and to mark wherever an SPI signature terminates at a stream. Create a point shape file to demark these locations and add new features using the editor toolbar. This shapefile can later be added to maps or even uploaded to a handheld GPS device so features can be located and investigated in the field. Train attributes with a coarser spatial resolution have also proved useful in our research. In a separate analysis, 30 meter DEM data were acquired, which are available for the entire country. This DEM was processed similarly to the LiDAR DEM and train attributes were calculated from it. CTI, which is also known as the Topographic Wetness Index, was found useful for determining areas of potential wetland restoration as shown in this example. The polygons are restorable wetlands identified by hand digitizing stereo pair ortho photos, which can be a time consuming process. The areas in red represent high CTI values. Although the level of detail is not as high with this type of data, it is a very rapid method of identifying similar features. Also, train analysis can be applied to a much larger area due to lower data processing demands of the coarse scale data. As mentioned earlier, these are also available nationwide, while LiDAR data coverages remain spotty for the time being. This concludes our third module of the train analysis tutorial.